and a member of Hand of Syria Committee in Australia and a journalist. Hello and welcome to Syria. Thank you. Would you please tell us the purpose of your visit to Syria? Uh, well, the purpose of the visit, I think uh, Syria has been cut off uh, politically and economically uh, from the world. And so it's very important to uh, connect with the Syrian people. So uh, we brought a group of Australians to come and connect, talk to, meet, sit down with uh, Syrian people here. And so, uh, despite the aggressive war that has uh, been waged against Syria, it's important that Syria knows that it still does have friends internationally. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Anderson, you have visited uh, Syria before. In your opinion, how important is visiting Syria? We think it's very important to see the human side of what's been going on. Uh, well, there's a, actually a, a great Syrian community in Australia. Um, they have, uh, w through our organization, which is Hands Off Syria, we uh, connect with a large number of them. And uh, they've been relentless in the defense of Syria, their homeland. Uh, they uh, participate in, uh, in the public rallies. Uh, they play a large role in, in spreading news and um, things that are happening back home. They connect with their families here in Syria and then they uh, do what they can to uh, present that to their Australian friends and the Australian community. Uh, so uh, they, they play a, a really important role, I think, uh, in showing what really is happening uh, in Syria. And it's, it's not uh, the same as an Australian or a Westerner talking about Syria. And so their opinions are really valued over there when a Syrian uh, says, you know, what really is happening in my country is this. Uh, I think more people listen. Mm -hmm. As an Australian born Syrian and a journalist, what could you offer to help Syria combat terrorism? I think uh, what I offer is pretty much what every Syrian can offer. Uh, but what I can probably do uh, extra is that uh, I can act as a bridge perhaps between the Australian people and the Syrian people. Uh, my connection to Syria is very deep and very strong and of course I inherited that from my parents uh, and uh, through living in Syria for a number of years but I was also born in, uh, in Australia and I identify as an Australian so I have uh, uh, absorbed both cultures and so of course I um, I, I see the good in both cultures and both countries and what I want to do is act as a bridge between my people in Australia and my people in Syria and despite the Australian government's aggressive stance towards Syria, uh, I possibly, uh, I, I have hope that the Australian people uh, will probably listen to people like me and not people like our politicians. And uh, as a journalist, of course, we know that journalists have, um, uh, you know, a, uh, a window to the world through the media. So I think I, ha I help in that way, and I hope that I am helping in that way. You have uh, visited Syria with different delegations. Uh, what are their impressions of our country? Well, uh, yeah, this is the second delegation that I've uh, come to Syria with. And um, they were both very different delegations. But what the Australians always say uh, is that they're blown away with the hospitality and the generosity of the Syrian people. And even more so that this is happening during a time of war, when people are meant to be uh, frustrated and tired and uh, probably you know, don't have time or the resources to welcome guests uh, in, in such a warm manner. But uh, it always happens in Syria and they always leave saying that they want to come back to Syria. Uh, and so that's something that should make all of Syria proud, that uh, every Syrian uh, that we have met during, or they have met during their visits has uh, left a really uh, loving, lasting impression on them. But they're also uh, very um, impressed with how everyday life is continuing in Syria. And so we, um, you know, the media over there basically says that Syria, you know, doesn't exist anymore. So they come thinking that they're coming into a really horrible war zone. 
when they come here and they see people in cafes and they see people in restaurants, hotels booked out, um, streets, you know, uh, are, are full, people are out until early hours of the morning, uh, they see that, you know, life is continuing and uh, the Syrian people's will to live is stronger than what their media and what their politicians are telling them. Dr. Anderson, how do you evaluate the, the conference? I think the conference was uh, an excellent uh, step um, in um, trying to uh, you know, spread information of how to combat terrorism. But what I think is really important is that, uh, as Dr. Anderson mentioned, greater participation from uh, either Western journalists or Western countries because uh, back in Australia or any other Western country we're living, they talk about ISIS like they are, you know, ISIS first enemies. And but the reality is that ISIS is fighting here and it's the people of this region that are suffering from these terrorist groups that were supported in the first place by Western governments. So there has to be greater recognition and appreciation from Western governments to come and participate in conferences like this and stop acting like they're the victims of ISIS when we know they're not. Uh, we know that the, the Syria and Iraq and Lebanon and uh, this whole region, they are the, they're on the front lines against ISIS and our armies, the Syrian army especially, they are the ones who are on the front lines against ISIS. So if anyone wants to talk about combating terrorism or forming a so-called coalition that is going around bombing the place, they need to first talk to the Syrians, they need to talk to the Iraqi people, they need to talk to the people who are on the front lines who ISIS are invading, you know, the land of. And that's what I would like to see. I would like to see uh, more appreciation, more recognition of what the Syrian army and what the, the armies of the region are doing in combating terrorism. Because all that they're doing over there uh, just, are just talking and acting like, you know, ISIS is on their doorstep when it's not. It's on your doorstep here. Mm -hmm. What is Australia's... Uh, that's a fact. There are so many fighters. Uh, I think there are a number of reasons. Uh, a really big reason is that a number of those fighters uh, were paid to come to Syria, just as a number of fighters were paid from all over the world to come to Syria to fight. Uh, and in recent times, there have been a couple of arrests that the Australian government has made uh, of people who were rec recruiting uh, others or fighters to come to Syria uh, to fight. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a well known fact right now that there were recruiting circles happening uh, and people were getting paid to come to Syria to kill the Syrian people. But also the ones that probably weren't paid were probably fooled, they probably thought they were coming for one reason or another. Uh, they also uh, found cover from the Australian government itself. Um, from the beginning of the Syrian crisis, there were foreigners coming here to fight. Uh, yet the Australian media and Australian government uh, refused to acknowledge it even when some of them died while fighting here and their Facebook, their public Facebook pages uh, you know, were being updated with uh, updates from the battlefield saying they captured this person, they captured this many group, uh, group of people um, and they talk about slaughtering them, really horrible things. The Australian government turned a blind eye to that and they supported what they called a revolution in Syria. We all know that there was no such thing as a revolution in Syria. So I think if, you know, a really disenfranchised 19-year-old with who probably lived a hard life and had no mm -hmm. friends uh, suddenly found that, um, you know, he can uh, have a, he can fight in a cause or he can, you know, help something and that the Australian government is on their side and that he can go without uh, facing any consequences. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of young men did come and do that. In it's, I guess it's an improvement that in uh, recent times the government has taken uh, a few steps to stop people from coming. At least they are acknowledging that there are terrorist groups now that are fighting in Syria, that there are foreigners, that there are their own foreigners, so Australians that are joining these terrorist groups. And so uh, they've taken certain steps 
to dis, uh, encourage them or to stop them. Uh, but one of those is that they will cancel their passports, so they will not let them come back to Australia. In my opinion, that is not a positive step um, because the Australians that have come to Syria to kill the Syrian people are not Syria's problems. They need to go back to Australia and they need to face justice in the country that uh, allowed them to become radicalised, that allowed them to book one-way tickets to Turkey and then cross over into Syria illegally. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Anderson, most of the world countries stress to, uh, the need to unify all efforts aimed at fighting terrorism. What do you think? Yes, it's true. That's what's necessary. But the problem is that there are now two coalitions, aren't there? There's two. The best way out of uh, this crisis? Oh, I think, uh, uh, like, like Dr. Anderson uh, said, I, I don't think Syria needs to be told what to do or how to. I think Syria is doing all it can to survive and to, uh, uh, to come out of this war uh, victorious. Um, but of course, uh, there's no denying that there has to be uh, a, a greater international agreement over what's happening in Syria. Uh, I, in my opinion, that Syria is just a playing field for uh, the, the you know, big international powers. And, um, and I'm sure that the Syrian leadership knows that. That's why, since the beginning of the crisis, and the, the invitations of negotiations and discussions were always open. And I think that's what needs to continue. Uh, there's nothing that Syria needs to do that's different. Syria just needs to continue. It needs to continue to communicate. It needs to continue to uh, fight this war on the ground uh, and in the media and politically as well. Dr. Anderson, do you want to add anything? Oh, look, uh, Syria is my country, and I'm, uh, I'm proud to uh, be uh, a Syrian. And uh, so, like you said, every time I come, uh, I meet new people as well and uh, I just get more and more proud of belonging to this great land and I, I, I really really hope from the bottom of my heart that this war will be over soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.